Hey peoples, welcome back to DMX 101. Well, obviously you liked what you saw in the first sort of preview that I showed you of what we were going to do, otherwise you wouldn't be back here now. But I'm not going to waffle anymore, from now on it's straight to work. What we're going to do is go back to the basics of DMX to start with, so that anything that you've already heard or you may have learnt and somebody's told you not quite right or got wrong, we're going to start afresh. Please, if you think some of these lessons are too basic, put it in the comments box and tell me. And again, if there's anything you want me to cover that you don't think I'm going to cover or I'm missing out, get it in the comments box for me. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel and let's see if we can learn something between us. So, starting with the basics. Well, hopefully, if you've got this far, we already know what the, one of these is. But do you know what one of these is? And no, it's not an XLR connector as you know it. We're going to show you what these are and how to program them. They're programmed in a language called binary, ones and zeros, i.e. the switches are either on or off creating the one or the zero. And probably the more modern version that you're used to is what these are. How to program them, what they mean. and what they do to the lights for you. We're going to be pulling this one out of my rack and playing around with it too, which is a classic, literally 12 DMX light, 16 channel, 512 DMX channel controller. We're going to be looking at DMX software, which looks rather frightening, but by the time we've finished explaining it, will be an absolute doddle for you to use and teaching you to program from classic PAR cans onto slightly more advanced effects and finally up to full sized 16 channel moving heads with any luck we'll be looking at wireless DMX I'm lucky I've got a lot of fixtures to play with something I haven't played with is wireless DMX yet but by the time we come to shooting that part of these videos I should have my hands on some and we'll be able to show you how to set up and use a lot of the different wireless DMX's. So where do you start you ask yourselves? That was a question I asked myself about two years ago when I first came back to this game discovered switch packs, relays and dimmers were a thing of the past and we're now on to this funny three channel stuff called DMX. I say three channels because it uses three pins, an earth, a data live and a data negative. You can see that. Now to anybody else, that looks like any old XLR lead. You can see that. It's not. You cannot use microphone or speaker cables for DMX due to the way they're constructed. A DMX cable is a data cable. Now without taking it apart, like I have, the only way you can find out is written down it, you can just see something like this, 100% double shielded professional DMX cable. Double shielded, what does that mean? Well, that means the data has got a shield around the edge of it to stop any interference getting in. Because let's face it, electricity causes interference and what do DJs play with a lot of? You got it, electricity. On the inside of that, you'll see that there is three cables. Now normally, a microphone cable has got one going outside here, which is the shield, a live, and a negative. This will cause you problems, believe me. On a DMX cable, all three pins are hooked up. The outside shield is the earth, and the inside two are data positive and data negative. That's starting at basics. Make sure you've got decent cables to start with. Now, the next thing you need, and I asked you earlier, 
Do you know what one of those is? That's right, it's not an XLR connector. If I take this apart, push the pins through so that you can see. Don't know if you can see there. Connect it up. That's got it to the three pins. Nothing on the earth, but between the live and the negative of the data is a resistor. You may think this will short it out, it won't. This is what you call a DMX terminator. Reason behind the terminator is to stop the signal bouncing back along the line. You'll sometimes see uh, in scanners a lot of the time the mirror is fluttering about. It's not a nice smooth scanning movement. Reason behind that is what they call data reflection. The data is going to the end of the DMX line, turning around and bouncing back down. So the two pieces of data for that scanner are colliding and it's giving the mirror the jitters. To get rid of it, you need a DMX terminator. Now there's two ways of getting one. You can spend anything from £2.50 to, I've seen, £6, £7 pounds on eBay. Or, you can make one yourself. Like I said, simple resistor, the right size resistor. I'll look it up, put it in the link below, in the description below. Right size resistor across the live and negative terminals of the XLR connector. You've made yourself a terminator. Quick one though, always make two. Reason being, this damn thing, he runs off when you're not looking and you lose him. So always carry two with you. Okay then, hopefully, like I said, I want to try and keep these lessons short or these videos short so that you can take things in. Hopefully I've shown you enough in this one as to what we're going to be doing next in the series. Hopefully I've shown you enough in this one as to what we're going to be doing in the series just to keep you interested. I promise you the next one's going to be a full lesson, but the next thing I need to teach you is going to take a good video to do it, and quite a length of time. Therefore, I'm going to save it till the next time. What are we doing next time? We're going to take a look at these. That's right, dip switches. What they are, what we use them for, and how to program them. And for that, you're either going to have to learn binary, or, don't worry, I'll make things easier. There's a website I know of that teaches you or shows you. You plug in the number that you want and it tells you the binary that you need for it. So it should make your life a bit easier. Anyway, till next time, take care, peoples.